I'm saved. You said I'm yours, Jesus. So, Lord, let us set our eyes on you tonight. No other reason than to be poured out by you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. We invite you into this place. We love to put our hands together. We love to dance and have so much joy in your presence. But we just love you. We love you, Jesus. We're here for you. Let us set our eyes on you, our focus on you, our attention on you tonight, because you deserve it. You are worthy of everything, Jesus. Everybody said amen and amen. Let's worship together tonight. Let's sing holy. Holy, that's who you are, angel.
Jesus, you're worth it tonight. You are worth following. You are worth sacrificing things for. Because Jesus, you laid your life down for us. It's so crazy. Sometimes it's it's hard to grasp, honestly. But Father, let our worship be pleasing to you. It's the least that we can do. Is, is worship you and is bringing you our best and saying that you are worth it. You deserve our time, our attention. Father, let this summer be different for us. Let this summer be the beginning of something wonderful that you have for us, something amazing. Let this be the summer that we get rooted in your word that we understand that you are worth it. You are worthy. Jesus, we love you and we bless your name. And we just thank you so much for being here in this place. Thank you for community that we get to all come together and worship you together, Jesus. We just love you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. It's so good to worship with y'all. Go ahead and make your way back to your seats.
though. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I'm so excited. Welcome to City Hope Youth. Um, I'm Jenna. I'm one of our small group leaders here, and I do other things like, you know, I don't know, help people do stuff. Um, but I'm super excited to be with you guys tonight. Uh, before we get started, I just want to start praying, and then I'll tell you all about how much I love chocolate. All right, so if you'll bow your head, close your eyes. Dearly Father, God, we thank you so much for being in this place. God, we thank you for even on a summer night that we get to grow in community and sit in your presence and get to worship you, God. I thank you so much for every single student, but extremely thank you, thank you, thank you for all of our leaders in here that give up time and give up moments to disciple and love our kids. God, we couldn't do it without them and they are amazing and you are the best. Amen. All right. Are you guys excited? Okay. Um, all right. So as I said, I'm going to start off telling you guys, I have this deep love, okay, for chocolate. And like, I love chocolate so much that it's gotten to be an addiction in my life. And um, you would say like, you have like crackhead energy, okay? But like, I'm like a crackhead for chocolate. Like I have like, I have withdrawals and all of the things and I get like really like overwhelmed. Like I'm, I just love chocolate, okay? Well, see, I have a baby sister, hey Bella. She taught me the like secret of life, okay? And it's avocado ice cream. And it's chocolate, it's chocolate, it's chocolate ice cream, but it's made with avocados, okay? And you're thinking to yourself, Jenna, I knew you were weird, but now I really know you're weird. It's true. I am. I'll admit it to you. I'm weird. I like love avocado ice cream. It's at Publix, so go buy it, okay? You can buy it in a pint. It's the greatest thing ever to like, man, okay? Like you, it's like the richest thing in all the world. Like, okay, it's just, it's so creamy. How many of you guys like wits? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. You can put your hands down. How many of you guys like Freddy's? You like Freddy's? Okay. You can put your hands down. You know how like soft Wits and Freddy's ice cream is? Like, you know, it's like melting in your mouth and it's like smooth perfection made straight from God himself. Yeah. Okay. That is what the avocado ice cream is like. It is so rich. It's so perfect. Oh my gosh. But any day that I'm like super stressed or super anxious and I've got a lot going on at work or just, you know, being myself, just being stressed about nothing. Um, I, if I have a bad week, I would, all, all I care for that day is when I come home, I'm going to eat the whole freaking pint of ice cream because it's only a pint. Um, but that's what I crave. That's what I want. I want a whole like pint of avocado ice cream. Okay. We'll see. I have the greatest best friend in the world um, and you don't have her because she's mine. And so that means, you know, you don't have her. But I have Hannah Galvis as my best friend and she's the best, see? Um, and so every single time she would like look at my calendar because my calendar is really detailed, but it's very chaotic. And she would look at my calendar and if she knew that I was having like a really week with like all of my dog sitting or all my babysitting or all the things with work, she would go and pre-stock our fridge with avocado ice cream. So then I got home, that is what I got to eat, the whole pint, and we'd watch our Korean TV show together because why not? Um, Korean TV show's funny. Um, and so she is the best, best friend in the world. See, but the thing is, she didn't just get me avocado ice cream because I like avocado ice cream or anything like that, but she got me avocado ice cream because she's selfless and she loves me and she cares for me, but that is the way that she exemplifies Christ. Every single moment of our friendship, all that she's ever done for me is exemplify Christ. And you know, I know who Christ is. I come to church, I do all these things, but sometimes when you're stressed and you got all these things on, you still need to see Christ in your every day, okay? And see, her way of showing me Christ is simply by being selfless and serving me. And see, that is the best way for each and every single one of us to show Christ and, and show our friends what true love looks like. It's just being selfless and serving our friends. See, I'm gonna read you guys a scripture of like the greatest best friendship ever, okay? And it's uh, David and Jonathan. Um, so David is the guy that killed Goliath, then became king of Israel. But he had a best friend um, before he became king, and that was Jonathan. And Jonathan was King Saul's son, okay? Everybody say King Saul. 
he was psychotic, um, if you didn't know. Um, so he wanted to murder um, David and Jonathan because they were like the best friends that there ever was. And so I'm gonna read you a scripture out of 1 Samuel 18, one through five. He said, after David had finished talking with Saul, he met Jonathan, the king's son. There was an immediate bond between them. See, like me and Hannah, immediate bond. We were just besties. All right, for Jonathan loved David. From that day on, Saul kept David with him and wouldn't let him return home. And Jonathan made a solemn pact with David because he loved him as he loved himself. Jonathan sealed the pact by taking off his robe and giving it to, get to David, together with his tunic, sword, bow, and belt. Whatever Saul asked, David did, um, and he did it successfully. So Saul made him a commander over the men of war, an appointment that was welcomed by the people and Saul's officers alike. See, so David got um, automatically appointed higher and higher into the army because he was like really, really awesome. He like loved God so much. Say, I love God. Thanks, I say that all the time. But see, the, he loved God so much and he was just obedient, all of these things. But then, see, Jonathan loved him so much that he gave him his robe, his belt, his sword, all of these things that, that made him signify that he was the king's son, that gave him all of this awesomeness. And so he gave all of that so selflessly to David because David was his true friend. Like he loved David so much. And see, the thing is a lot of us, we love our friends. Like we love them so much, but I think a lot of us get in this rhythm in this rut of serving our friends or, or being selfish or selfless to them. But there's two things that I want to point out in this scripture. And first it is love selflessly with no expectation. See, Jonathan loved David with no expectation. He gave him his, his robe and his sword and his belt and his tunic, and all these things, but he had no expectation that he was ever going to get anything in return. He was simply just loving and serving and caring for him because that's the way that he exemplified God. And see, so, so many of us, we get in this rut and we get in these moments where we get so trapped in either our selfishness or we get trapped with, I'm gonna serve you just so that I can get something out of this. See, I haven't always been the best lover of the Lord, um, still not, but there's, there's been moments where I've gotten so trapped in my mind, I've gotten so trapped in this rut of being selfish and not really caring about my friends. All I cared about was, you know, I gotta get this done, I gotta do this done, and, and sometimes, I would start serving them, but I would only serve them. So like, you know, like three weeks down the road when, you know, I had a lot going on, maybe that they would come and help me out. But the thing is when you begin to serve your friends and you begin to exemplify Christ and begin to do all of these things, you start to serve them with this expectation or with no expectation, but this expectation that you are going to start, um, what's the word? Oh my gosh. It's like this, you start to um, begin to show the love of Christ. Um, see, I want to read you this scripture, period. Yeah. First uh, Peter 4, um, 8 through 10, it says, Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. It doesn't say just share your home. It says cheerfully share your home with um, those who need a meal or a place to stay. You see in this scripture, it says that you, they need a place or a meal. You know, you giving them a meal or a place to stay, there's no expectation that you're ever gonna get anything in return. You giving them a meal, you giving them a place to stay, they obviously have no way to benefit you, but it's this cheerfulness, this, this thing inside of you, this innate part of you to serve people, to love people well and, and be selfless. That is how God is going to be shown through you. And God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. See, when you begin to use your gifts, when you begin to use exactly how God created you, you begin to exemplify Christ in every single aspect of your life. So when you're loving people and, and you're caring for people genuinely out of this love and this care and this selflessness, see, lives begin to change. See, when Jonathan was serving David and, and, and King Saul got so mad because King uh, David started to rise up in this army and, and people started shouting and cheering for him in the streets and started singing all of these songs, talking about how he was a king that killed so many more people than Saul. And Saul got filled with so much pride, like 
so much pride, okay? He was so angry that he, he automatically wanted to kill him. But Jonathan's response wasn't, well, hope you die. No, he, <laughs> that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Okay, <laughs> that's a terrible friend. Um, he literally had to help David get out of the kingdom. He selflessly put himself in danger, not only to be rejected from your dad, but also for the chance that his dad was also going to murder him. Like, he was like, I'm going to give you literally my life. Like, I'm literally selflessly, like, trying to save you by getting you out of the kingdom and hiding you, even though that might make my dad really, really angry and also take my life. But there was no expectation that he was ever gonna receive something back from David. He did it because he loved David and that is what a Christ follower would do. You, you selflessly serve your friends. See, a lot of us get in this, this rut of serving people and I have been in that place like so many times I I love people I love serving but you get in this I'm just going to serve everybody and do all of these things but it's this obligation that you feel like you have to be a servant because as a Christ follower that's who you are but as a friend you love selflessly with no obligation you have no obligation to go to your friends and care for them and, and do all these things for them. And in Romans, I'm gonna read you guys this scripture. It says, love each other with genuine affection. Not just a little bit of affection, not just affection, but with genuine affection. And take delight in honoring each other. Sometimes we get so focused on ourselves, we get so focused on all of these things that we forget what it's like to love out of a genuineness just for people. And we love, we forget what it's like to, to care and serve people because we love people, but not out of the obligation of just doing this just because you have to. See, sometimes we serve at church, but you feel like you have to come to church to please me or Anthony or KB, but I want you to serve because you love God. I want you to serve because it fills your cup, but not out of this obligation to, to please somebody or, or make someone proud of you. See, when you serve, you serve with no obligation because that is, that's really what Christ is trying to do inside of you. He wants to create this genuine affection for people. I can remember back in high school, I um, had, had friends, um, but my friends didn't really come to church. Uh, they didn't really do anything. And I felt like this constant state of like outpouring. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone always needed something. Everyone always needed someone to talk to. They just, it was just like always. I was like always giving all of this energy and all of this time. And I can remember just being like so fed up. I was like, I hate this so much. I want someone to love me as much as I love them. I want someone to serve me as much as I serve them. And I can remember this one time I had this friend and she was like, can we please go to dinner? Like, I really, really need to talk to you. And I was like, it's like the third time this week. What more do you have to talk about? And so that's terrible. I'm so going to pray about that. Um, see, and I can just remember it was like so terrible. And I was like, God, I literally can't do this anymore. Like, just please send me somebody. I could just, anybody. I just need one friend to talk to. I've, I've been everybody's friend and I, I've, I've cared about them. I've served them. I've been so selfless. I've done all the things right. And I'm stressed out because I don't really want to do this anymore. And I was in my car and I was driving to go get dinner with her because, you know, I felt like I had to, but I did that out of obligation, even though like there was no obligation to serve her. And God met me in my car. Like I was listening to worship music and I was singing and I felt so convicted. And I was like, dang, you're the worst. And I, I was praying to God and he was like, CG, the thing is right now, the season that you're in, you are at this constant state of pouring out, but that's why you're meeting with me. That's why you're reading your Bible. That's why you're going to church and filling up because right now in these moments, I'm using you as a vessel. I'm using you to exemplify Christ in every single way possible. But right now I need you to humble yourself and stop getting so trapped in your pride and getting so trapped and thinking that you have all your crap together when really you don't. And I need you to start loving people out of true love for people and not just because it makes you look good. And I was like, oh, okay, you're right. And I think there's so many of us that you're in this constant state of outpour and you're at this constant state of like, oh my gosh, 
why do all of my friends need me all the time? Why, why, why do I have to do all of these things all of the time? Where's my friend? Where's the person that I get to talk to? Your person's coming. Your friend is coming. But right now, God is speaking to you. God wants to use you as a vessel. God wants to use you to begin to, to be a friend that exemplifies Christ in every single aspect. God wants to humble you so deeply and so kindly that when people see you, they just see the hands and feet of Jesus. See, Jesus said to himself, I didn't come to serve, or yeah, I didn't come to be served, but I came to serve. God, him himself didn't come to just have everybody kiss his feet in the ground that he walked on, even though he deserves it. He did it because he loves us so much. He died on the cross for you and me because he loves us so much, so selflessly. I, I don't deserve it. I'm literally the worst. Like I think terrible thoughts and th terrible things. And, and, and the thing is, but God, he loves me so selflessly. And for us to be like Christ, we have to begin to love our friends selflessly with no obligation, with no expectation in return, but just sitting at the feet of Jesus and saying, okay, I'm ready for you to use me. I'm ready for you to make me be the best friend that I could ever be. I'm ready to, to not only just be that best friend that loves people, but I'm also, I'm ready to be like you in every single aspect, not in just your day in and day out, but God use me as your vessel of servanthood. So you have this, my screensaver on my phone is, um, it's like these three things that I want with, for God, like my relationship with Christ. And because I have a bad memory, right now, I can only remember two of them. But um, the last one is I wanna be in a constant state of servanthood. See this constant state of servanthood, every single moment of my life, I want to, oh, obedience is your offering. Yeah, that's one of them. Um, but like being obedient, like you're offering your life to walk in obedience. And sometimes that looks like caring for your friend, even when it's hard loving your friend, serving them selflessly, even when it's hard. And, but you having this constant state of serving, serving your friend with no obligation and no expectation. I wanna pray for you guys, if that's okay. Cool, yeah, okay. Uh, I wanna pray and if you feel like you're in that moment in that state of, I'm just serving my friend because I feel like I have to, or I'm serving my friend because I feel like I need something in return. I want you to sit and I want this to just be a moment with you in Christ. I just want this to be a moment for him to speak to you and him begin to tell you the reasons why you were created, the reasons why you are the good friend, that the reasons why he loved you and all of this purpose that he has for you as this friend. And, and I want you to begin to be filled up by him because the only, the only true way that I was filled by him was going to my leader and being like, this is how I feel, but also like sitting at the feet of Jesus and being like, God, I can't do this crap without you. I can't love people without you. I can't serve people without you. And so I want us to bow our heads and close our eyes. And I want us to actually have that moment of humbling ourselves before Jesus and saying, hey, I need you. I need your presence. I need your voice so that I can be this friend of servanthood. I can be this servant that you've created me to be. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you so much for every single moment every single day that you have been so patient and so kind. I thank you for the overcorrecting that you've done in my heart because I needed it. But God, I, for the student that's in here that feels empty and feels unloved and feels like there's not a friend for them, God, I pray that right now in this moment that you begin to speak to them and that you begin to fill their cup and begin to say, hey, I see you as that faith-filled friend. I'm bringing your person. I'm bringing you your Jonathan. I'm bringing you your Hannah. And you don't have to serve with this expectation or this obligation to do so, but I'm meeting you here right now to be that friend, to use you as a vessel. God, I pray that you right now begin to, to build them back up. God, I pray that the stress and this worry of carrying everybody's problems, God, I pray that they begin to lay them at your feet and begin to have you speak to them, God, that you begin to have you fill their cup, God, and 
every single moment where they feel like they're inadequate of being that selfless friend, I begin to, you begin to remind them what it's like to be a Christian, what true servanthood is like, God. God, and I pray that every single moment that their outflow is obedience to you, but also this outflow of just loving people with the true genuineness because of what you've done inside their heart. God, we thank you and we praise you in your most holy and precious name. Amen.